Hello and welcome to our second discussion on short-term decisions. This video will walk you through examples of the common types of short-term decisions and teach you how to think about the analysis to determine the change in profits if the decision is implemented. After viewing this video, you will be able to determine the format that should be used for each common short-term decision. You will learn to identify relevant items to include in the analysis and determine the change to profits that will occur if the short-term decision is implemented. Our first example will be a special order. The request to buy a large quantity at $8 instead of the normal sales price of $10 makes this situation a special order. As you read the information related to the special order, identify the relevant items that will change if the special order is accepted. Only relevant items will be included in the analysis. The variable product costs, direct material, direct labor, and variable overhead are always relevant to a special order because the products must be made before they can be sold. The variable selling costs that will not be incurred are not relevant because the company's total selling cost will not change. A change in total cost of the company is what makes a cost relevant. The listed fixed cost will not change if the special order is accepted. It does not require more of the fixed cost to do the special order. They are irrelevant and will not be included in the analysis. The additional fixed costs for the part for the machine and the separate shipping cost are a change to total cost of the company and will be included in the analysis. A relevant cost is one that will be different in total for the company if the special order is accepted. The cost per unit can be the same and the cost is still relevant because more units made will increase the total cost for the company. We will first assume the company has capacity and then we will assume the company has no excess capacity. Sales will change with the special order. We will use the contribution margin income statement and include only the identified relevant items in the analysis. First, compute the contribution margin per unit. A change in total makes the item relevant. The per unit amount can stay the same and still be relevant. Multiply the contribution margin per unit by the units in the special order to get the total contribution margin from the special order. Subtract the added fixed cost to get the change in profits from the special order. Selling at a lower cost, as long as there is capacity, can be profitable when the company incurs limited added fixed cost. Now, assume the company does not have the capacity to do the order without selling to regular customers. When the company does not have excess capacity, the contribution margin loss from normal orders that will not occur must be considered. First, compute the contribution from a regular order. Include the normal sales price and all normal variable cost. Multiply this by the units in the special order that will not be sold to regular customers. This is the contribution margin lost when units are not sold to regular customers. The contribution margin loss must be compared to the increase in profits from the special order. The company will lose more than it gains and the special order should not be accepted if the company is already producing at capacity. Now let's walk through an example of a make or buy. The first step is to determine the relevant costs that will be different if a decision to buy instead of do it themselves is made. The supplier's offer is to make the entire part for the company. If the supplier makes the part instead of the company, all of the variable product cost will not be incurred by the company. Allocated cost to this part will move to other areas of manufacturing and the total company cost will not change. Allocated costs are not ever relevant since the total company cost will not change. Fixed manufacturing and overhead related to machines that only make this part and the supervisor for this part will not be incurred if the part is made. Is not made. As such, these costs are relevant. Warehouse costs will be reduced if the part is purchased. A change in cost is relevant. 
all relevant costs will be included in the analysis. A make or buy decision does not affect sales. Sales won't change, therefore the contribution margin income statement is not used. Let's begin with the buy side first. The cost per unit and the warehouse costs that won't be paid if the company buys the part are relevant. Include only relevant items that will change. On the make side, list all the costs the company won't occur, incur if the part is purchased from the supplier. You should notice that the fixed costs are included in the cost per unit because the problem presents it this way. This should only be done when the quantity is not expected to change. You should almost always subtract fixed cost in total after you compute the total variable cost. The additional cost to buy the part is lower than the added cost to make the part. Therefore, the part should be purchased from the supplier. The maximum amount the company should pay someone else to make the part should not be greater than the cost per unit the company incurs to make the part themselves. Our next example is a decision to sell products as they are or process them further into different products and sell for a higher price. The first step is to identify the relevant revenues and relevant cost. The difference in sales value at split off and the sales value after further processing is the change in revenues. The further processing costs are the only relevant costs that change. The joint process cost must be incurred regardless of the, of the decision and therefore they are irrelevant. Only the relevant revenues and costs are included in the analysis. The change in revenue is computed and the added costs are given. Product X is more profitable and product Y is less profitable if you process it further. Our next decision is whether to drop a product line. Dropping a product line will change the company's total sales and therefore the contribution margin income statement format is used. The accountant must first sort the information by variable and fixed expenses and determine if fixed expenses are directly related to the product or if fixed expenses are allocated to product lines. Direct costs are only related to the particular product line. If the product line goes away, the cost will go away also. Allocated cost will be incurred by the total company even if the product line goes away. Cost allocated to product B will be moved to product A if product B goes away, and the company's total cost will not change. The company expects that some customers who purchase product B will purchase product A if product B is no longer available. Sales will change if product B is added, therefore the contribution margin income statement format is used. Compute the contribution margin generated by product line B and compare it to the fixed cost that will be saved. The net is the change to operating income if product B is dropped. The company will lose $200,000 more than it saves in fixed cost. Next, consider the change in product A sales if product B is dropped. The sales increase will result in an additional 80000 contribution margin and income because there will be no change in fixed cost. This can be computed using either of the two ways presented. The loss from product B is netted with the gain in income from the higher sales of product A, the net loss of $120,000 from dropping product B. The company should not drop product B. The contribution margin from product B is needed to cover other fixed costs of the company. Our last example is the decision to add a product line. The first step in doing the analysis of a short-term decision is to identify the relevant items, the sales and costs that will change for the company if product Y is added. The sales price and all variable costs related to line Y are relevant. Direct fixed costs will also change. The company will not 
incur direct cost if product Y is not added. Shared costs are the same as allocated cost. The total for the company, 85000 is allocated to all other product lines if product Y is not added. As such, the total cost will not change. It will just be shared by the two products. Sales will change, so use the contribution margin income statement format. Compute the total contribution margin generated by product Y and compare this to the added fixed cost. The result will be an additional $20,000 in operating income. Ignore costs that will not change if product Y is added. After viewing this video, you should be able to determine the format that is used for each type of common short-term decision. You should also be able to identify relevant items to include in the analysis and determine the change to profits that will occur as a result of a short-term decision. Please go to studymyaccounting.com and work the practice test to verify your understanding. Write out the answers and check your answers to the answers and explanations provided. Please take the time to write them out. It will help you really get it. Thank you for being prepared for class. It is very much appreciated.